everyone. My name is Jamon McKinney, or you could just call me Juice because that is my nickname. We are diving into the New Orleans Saints football team in this episode, and we're going to discuss how many games they are going to win during the 2020 NFL season. Now, the last two, the last three seasons, pardon me, the last three seasons, the Saints have been knocking on that Super Bowl door. They've been close to getting to the promised land, but they've fallen short the last three seasons. Versus Minnesota, you had the Minnesota Miracle in 2017. The In 2018, you lose to the Rams at home. A lot of Saints fans felt they were robbed in that game. I said that, nope, Drew Brees got the ball first in overtime, and he choked. And the Rams, they just played better than the Saints. So I didn't count that as a, as a robbery. The Saints did not get robbed. They just lost to a better team at home. Sorry, Saints fans, if you're, if you're crying about that still. um, I, I, I feel sorry for you, but either way, and that was a loss. And then last year versus the Vikings at home, they choked. They should not have lost that game. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings had no business going into Drew Brees' building and getting a W in their home stadium. And it happened, you know. And uh, the Saints have been knocking on that door. Now, I've been saying the last couple of years that the Saints' downfall in the playoffs was going to be due to the fact that they've not had a second wide receiver to go up Michael Thomas. Well, guess what? This year, they've got that guy in Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders has the chance to change the fortunes of the Saints offense. You obviously got um, Drew Brees at quarterback. We'll get to him in a little bit. He's got very good weapons. You know, Mike Thomas, you can make the argument he's the best wide receiver in all football. Um, now, you have Emmanuel, now you have Emmanuel Sanders. Jared Cook started to play a lot better towards the end of the season. Traquan Smith is kind of meh, but he's not terrible. You got three really good running backs. When, when you look at um, Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray, and Ty Montgomery. I like it. The offensive line is one of the best in all football. And you add Cesar Ruiz from Michigan in the 2020 NFL Draft this year. So look, the Saints offense is going to be pretty good. Now, I've said in the past th that the Saints Super Bowl window has closed. Simply because... I just think that it gets to a point where you don't get as many good opportunities and breaks as the Saints have gotten the last couple of years. And maybe I was a little bit harsh on the Saints. I do think this team can definitely win the Super Bowl this year. However, I'm just not so sure. And one of the reasons is because of Drew Brees. Drew Brees is one of the six greatest quarterbacks to ever play the quarterback position in NFL history. Slam dunk Hall of Famer. But listen. This is Drew Brees' last opportunity. He has to ball out this year. If Drew Brees wants to win a second Super Bowl and really validate his legacy, this is the one last opportunity that he is going to have in order to do so. You know, in the playoffs the last couple of years, versus the Eagles, versus even in a win versus the Eagles, he wasn't very good, versus the Rams and versus the Vikings, Drew Brees has not gotten it done. And Drew Brees is 41 years old. And look, a lot of people are going to throw statistics at me. They're going to say, look at the completion percentage. Look at the yards. Look at the touchdowns. And yes, Drew Brees has put up good numbers the last couple of seasons. However, when you actually watch the Saints play, from a stylistic standpoint, I'm concerned. This offense has been a gimmicky offense the last couple of years due to, due to the fact that Drew Brees is a limited system quarterback at this point in his career. That's just the hard truth, guys. It really is. Drew Brees is not very mobile. He has lost some arm strength. When he gets moved out the spot, he's not as dynamic as he once was. And Drew Brees is no longer more than the system. I don't think Drew Brees is an elite quarterback anymore. He's still a very good quarterback. You know, he's, he's one of the arguably 10 best quarterbacks in football still. But Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, Carson Wentz, Cam Newton, Tom Brady, i take some of those guys over Drew Brees, definitely. Um, and the thing about Drew Brees is last year, he played great, but he was fresh. And that's a key thing. The Saints are going to have to find the correct way to manage Drew Brees this year if they want to get the most out of Drew Brees come playoff time. I believe this team needs to be a run heavy team. I believe they need to preserve Drew Brees until the playoffs roll around because not this past year, but the year the Saints were allegedly robbed versus the Rams, 
Drew Brees played all 16 games, and by week 17, he kind of looked a little bit shot and worn down, okay? Now, he did miss some games due to injury this past year, but I think that that was actually a blessing in disguise for Drew Brees because he looks good as new during the regular season. Now, come playoff time, it didn't look so good. But see, what Sean Payton is going to have to do is he's going to have to sort of low-manage Drew Brees while still trying to find ways to win football games. Taysom Hill needs to be more involved with this offense. Talent-wise, the Saints might be one of the five most talented teams in all football. In fact, I'm actually going to say they're one of the five most talented teams in all football. However, there is a formula to beat this team. That's the problem. And from a stylistic perspective, I don't know if they match up with some of these high explosive offensive teams because they're sort of more of a gimmicky gimmicky offense. And while they will score a lot of points, they're more so relying on efficiency. They don't get cheap touchdowns over the top like the Chiefs do. Like, I don't know, the Buccaneers might be able to do this year. Now, part of the reason why the Saints might have struggled from a stylistic perspective the last couple years maybe due to the fact that they did not have a second option beside Michael Thomas at wide receiver. Maybe Emmanuel Sanders is that difference maker. And I could totally be wrong, but until proven otherwise, if you run the football and get pre- if you run the football on this defense and get pressure on Drew Brees, and if you put this team in a position in which they have to convert third and longs, this team is not going to win a Super Bowl. Okay? And I don't think they're a team that can that can win shootouts if they have to. They're, if they're falling from behind, I don't think the Saints can come back because they rely on 10, 11, 12 plays to score their touchdown passes. The Saints are much better when they're ahead of the curve. They're sort of like the Baltimore Ravens. When the Baltimore Ravens are playing their style of football, they're unbeatable. That's how the Saints are. But when you force them to be uncomfortable... This is where this team can struggle. So, look, I could see a team like Green Bay beating the Saints come playoff time. A team like Seattle, a team like Tampa Bay, a team like San Francisco, who has the players to match those formulas. Run the football, pressure Drew Brees, score points with our quarterback, expose that secondary, and force them to be uncomfortable. So, look. I think the Saints can win the Super Bowl this year by a much lower on the Saints than most people. Now, as far as Sean Payton goes, situations are everything. They are. Situations are everything when it comes to this team. Because Sean Payton, the last couple years in the playoffs, his play calling and crunch time has not been very good. Sean Payton has to do better. We all know Sean Payton is one of the most talented offensive minds as far as the head coach goes. In NFL history. We're not arguing that. But what I am going to argue is how good Sean Payton is situationally with this football team. He needs to be better. Now, I like the Saints defense. I think Marcus Davenport is talented. I think Cam Jordan is very talented. I like Shutter. I like uh Shutter Rankins, a defensive tackle. I like Demario Davis. I like Marshawn Lattimore. They have some real players. However, that secondary is kind of questionable. You know, Marshawn Lattimore is excellent, although he is a little bit inconsistent. I don't feel great about Janoris Jenkins being the number two cornerback on this team. So as far as the Saints secondary goes, I'm just not so sure about it. And I don't know. There's just something schematically with the Saints when I watch them play that bothers me. This team will, will get some turnovers and make some big plays, no doubt. But you can move the football on this defense. For whatever reason, the Saints, from a schematic standpoint, just are off in some type of way. I don't know what it is. I can't wrap my arms around it. But the Saints just find ways to give up yards and not be in great positions on defense. Also, they're one of the most penalized defenses last year. They need to be more disciplined. And they need to be put in better positions to succeed. Because they have the talent to be a top five defense easily guys so with all that being said the saints are a talented team but all this talk about the saints winning the nfc being the most talented team in the nfc winning this division not so sure about it i have the saints going 10 and 6 
this year. Now, I think they're still a playoff team. I really do. There's too much talent on this team for me to say they're not a playoff team. you got a great offense. You know, you've got a great defense. you got a very good quarterback. you got a very good head coach. But from a stylistic standpoint, from a schematic standpoint, and with the questions I have about Drew Brees, I just don't see this team being as good as people think they are going to be. Not to mention, their schedule is not doing them any favors at all. And keep this in mind. Last year, the Falcons had a down year in the division. The Panthers, you know, Cam Newton, he was injured most of the season. The Buccaneers, they had Jameis Winston giving the football away to the opposing team 24-7. I believe the Falcons are going to be better. I believe the Buccaneers are going to be better. I actually have the Buccaneers winning more games than the Saints this year. And also, the Panthers are not going to be an easy out at the end of the season once Matt Rule and Teddy Bridgewater start clicking as a quarterback and head coach duo. So, for all those reasons, and due to the fact that I don't know how good Drew Brees is going to be this year, due to his older age, and let's not forget, if this team struggles early on in the season, Drew Brees might have to answer to this team. Because, listen, the last time we saw Drew Brees in the playoffs, he wasn't very good. And the comments that he made about the flag in the offseason... That did not suit very well with his teammates. So Drew Brees, he has to ball out this year. But I do think this team is a 10-win team. But man, this schedule is not doing them any favors. Now, week number one through four, let's go over those games. Tampa Bay at home, at Vegas, Packers at home, then at Detroit. This is the opportunity for the Saints to maybe go 4-0. But I also could see the Saints only being... Two and two after these stretch of games. Listen, everyone keeps telling me that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to lose week number one to the Saints. And that might be true. However, last year, the Saints barely beat the Texans in their week one matchup at home. The year prior to that, they lost to the Buccaneers at home. And Ryan Fitzpatrick was the quarterback. Do not be shocked if the Saints lose week number one, week number one to Tom Brady, but I do have them winning that game. At Vegas, that's a sleeper game. I think Vegas has the offensive firepower to match up well with the Saints, but I probably favor New Orleans. Now, Green Bay at home. I do think Green Bay is actually a better football team than the Saints this year. I just think they're a more well-rounded team. I I think Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than Drew Brees. And look, I think the Packers have the pass rush and the run game to give the Saints problems. However, it is at home for the Saints, so I favor them in that game. And at Detroit, that probably will be a loss. I'm higher on Detroit than most people. Detroit was a very competitive team last year before Matthew Stafford got hurt. So, i say that may be a loss. So, any between these four games, you could be 2-2. Two and two. I don't know what games you're going to lose, but that's a possibility. Or you could be 4-0, so we'll see. Now, Week 5 versus the Chargers, by Week versus Carolina, and then at Chicago. I think you're, you're going to string together a lot of wins right there. The Chargers, that could be a loss due to the fact that they have a very good defensive line. But I favor the, the Saints in that game. Off of bye week versus Carolina, you'll win that game probably. At Chicago, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit of a scare due to, due to Chicago's defense. But I think, I, think, I think that the Saints are a more talented team. Now, after that Chicago game, oh boy, it gets tough, man. At, at Tampa Bay, San Francisco, Atlanta, at Denver, at Atlanta, at Philadelphia, the Chiefs, the Vikings, and at Carolina. Boy, is that a tough eight-game stretch right there. It really is. Okay? Now, at Tampa Bay, that probably is a loss. I will say that the Saints split with the Buccaneers at the very least this year. You could get swept by the Buccaneers. You could sweep them. I'm going with a lo- I'm going with a loss in Tampa at San uh, San Francisco at home. You're probably going to win that game be- because you you lost to them last year. You should have beat them last year. However, I do believe the 49ers are a better football team, so you could lose that game. Atlanta at home is probably a win. Even though I do think you'll split with Atlanta this year. At Denver, I think that's probably a loss. Um, Denver is a very talented team. They've got a lot of great skill position players. 
They've got a lot of great, impactful players on defense. And I think by the but towards the end of the season, that's when Drew Locke and that young Broncos team is going to be playing their best football. So that's probably a loss. Now, at Atlanta, that's probably a loss as well. Like I said, Ivy splitting with the Atlanta Falcons this year. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. At Philly, that could go either way. I could pick Philly. I could pick New Orleans. But I think New Orleans is probably a more talented team. So, they'll probably beat Philadelphia. But I'm not so sure. Kansas City is a loss. I would say Kansas City is arguably the best team in the entire NFL. They return a ton of stars from their Super Bowl from their Super Bowl winning team from a year ago. And Patrick Mahomes is just flat out better than Drew Brees right now. So I'd probably have that as a loss. Minnesota at home should be a win. And at Carolina, that could be a sneaky game. But I'd probably say you win that game. So either way you slice it, looking at this entire schedule, the early part is relatively easy. But I won't be shocked if the Saints lose a couple early games, you know, week five through eight is the soft spot of the schedule, but week nine through 17 is where it is going to get tough. And you have an early bye week. That's very concerning because Drew Brees late in the season, when he played the entire full season in 2018, okay, when you guys got robbed by the Rams toward the end of the year, he did not look like the same quarterback. So I don't know how great the Saints are going to be late in the season because Drew Brees, I don't know how well he's going to hold up. So either way you slice it, I do believe the Saints are talented. I'm not as high on the Saints as some people. So I have them at 10-6. I, I think this is a playoff team. However, I don't think they win the division, but they could prove me wrong. Either way you slice it, I think this is a pretty good team that can win the Super Bowl in 2020. I have the New Orleans Saints going 10-6 during the 2020 NFL season. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day and I'm out.